This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. You see next to me, I have a settee that was broken in our recent move to the farm. And fortunate for me, I have master woodworker and second generation woodworker, Chester Spear, in the house to help me with this repair. Now, ordinarily, a lot of us DIYers would take some plastic wood and maybe build it up, sand it down, and call it a day. But with these two pieces of wood broken off, we're going to learn the correct way to repair the city. Hey Chet, thanks so much for sticking around and helping out with this project. Oh, no problem. I'm really glad to be here and I enjoyed doing the last video we did together showing you guys how to use the tools. And now we're going to use some of those tools yeah. on repairing this settee. Like some of these. Now, it seems like your movers, when they moved the settee here to the house, they must have just pushed this out because we have all this broken wood. So we're going to remove the arm first. Okay, and the broken pieces are right in here, right and left hand side of this arm. It would have been nice if the movers had not taken these pieces of wood away with them. Uh, yeah. Because then we could have re-glued them in and they would have already had the proper shape of the molding. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the arm. Okay. We're going to cut away some of this wood here, insert a new piece of wood, and then we're going to reattach the arm. Great. So when you take the piece off, you have to be sure not to just pull it off or you can feel that that would break more of this out. Right. So, so what's behind this? What's underneath it? There's a dowel under there and so when we take it off, I pull the back out and then I want to go up with this piece. Oh, I see. And you can see here, there's yeah. the dowel that was left. Yeah. Here's the piece. See, this piece is broken off here. Well, here's the original piece that stayed. Okay. And what we're missing is this whole wedge out of here. Yeah. Here we have an issue because there was so much glue in there, he didn't really break anything, but he, he broke the glue joint, right. which pulled some of the wood away. So glue won't adhere to glue. So we have to take off all the old glue and make it wood to wood. Now that the arm is off, I see you're using your L-shaped vise to hold the arm in place. Yeah, and we want to make sure that this isn't moving when we're using the chisels. The other thing that we want to make sure is when you're using a metal vise like this, if there isn't any wood that's attached to the vise, put a rag or a couple other pieces of wood in there so that when you clamp onto this, you're not damaging the wood. You don't want to give it any worse issues. So here we are lightly pulling it in. So now that's secure. Okay. All this glue has to go away because if we don't take it away, it's not going to adhere. So here's a piece of wood that has to go, the glue underneath it. So we're going to use a chisel to do that. Okay, and it really is rough. Here, I'm going to put my hand underneath the chisel here, away from the blade. Mm -hmm. And that's just to help support as I guide it. And you're going to take the chisel and you're going to just gently cut off. You see how I'm moving it, twisting it? I'm not right. banging it, I'm not right. hitting it with a hammer. Nice and gentle. I'm just putting it against anything that sticks up and then I'm turning. So up to the stop, and then I'm turning to get that part off. And the reason I'm keeping my chisel flat is I don't want to dig into the wood. All I want to do is take off these high spots that are here. So you're trying to make a nice even surface for the new glue to go on to the top of. Yes, as long as you have enough good bondable surface around it. Okay. And we're not going to try to clean out this dowel hole because we're going to use the existing dowel. If I cleaned that out, then the new dowel would not fit. Doing a little bit of cleanup of this glue, and I think that's fine. And so now let's dry fit this into the piece. Oh, that looks perfect. This glue is waterproof. You can use it interior or exterior. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is that it has a, a, a brownish tint inside there, so when, you, when you're working on a dark wood, you don't get a That's white great. line That's when great. it dries. Yeah, great it'll tip. It'll add you having to fill great it. Great tip. And it's extremely strong. It's actually stronger than the wood itself. So when you glue something and it breaks, you can see right here, the glue joint on the original hide glue didn't break, the wood broke. Oh. So always the glue is stronger than that. This chair was broken before. The evidence of this is here, Renee. You see this little white uh -huh. line here? Mm -hmm. Well this piece was broken and you can feel here where it wasn't correctly matched. Right. You see it's, how it's sticking There's a ledge. Out? And when I was cleaning out over there, I had told you about what glue to use and what glue not to use. Yes. <laughs> this was repaired with Elmer's glue. 
That's my famous go-to glue for, for wood, yeah. and it's wrong. And it's a hard plastic, but it doesn't, um, it, 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 it will dry up. It, some people use it as a filler. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the reasons probably why this broke again is because they didn't do good joinery. Well, that's a great thing to know, a great tip for DIYers. Maybe avoid that glue, and what kind of glue would you use instead? Well, my preference is, and, and I know you don't really want me to do a product placement, but well, Type Bond has three different types. Okay. Type bond one, type bond two, and this is type bond three. Okay. That's where that's supposed to be. Right. Now, there's a chip out here, mm -hmm. and here's a chip out here. Yeah. But what I discovered is it's all the way through. Ah. So this piece of wood, if I were to fix this with a piece of wood and this piece of wood, it wouldn't give the support that we need for this arm. Right, because, you know, I really would be inclined to put a little bit of plastic wood in one side and then the other, but then that means there's a missing portion behind the arm, really causing it to still wobble. Well, and you have the advantage of being an artist, so you could go over the plastic wood and put in the fake grain to make it look right, but not everybody can do that. True, that's true. So it's better to replace it with the proper wood and what we're going to do is we're going to carve out some of this so we can put a square piece of wood in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shape the square piece of wood to this molding with those planes that I showed you yesterday. Remember we talked about replacing this wood in here. And we've got this wedge shape and we bought some wood to replace it with. But we have a little problem that we have to deal with is we use the square over here to mark where we're going to cut this wood away. And we, it's square. And the new wood is square on one end, but we have to transfer this angle because this is not square. You see, if I put this here, you see there's an angle to oh, that. That's a little unusual. So what we have to do is uh, use... Is a bevel. Exactly. The we bevel that we this. talked about. Yeah, we learned about this in your video. And the nice thing about a bevel is that you just loosen the screw and you can change this angle, then slide it right over. Mm -hmm. Now, if you'll tighten yep. that for me. You got it we will have this angle already set and when we put this piece in it'll slide in and replace that without a problem great so the piece of wood that you cut is a little bit longer than what we need and it's a little bit deeper than what we need so let's take this away and you can show us exactly how you're going about cutting this because this is really making people nervous right now that you're going to be chopping into this piece of furniture and possibly ruining it well and there is that possibility. <laughs> but no, it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to go from this molding out to this thickness. So that's the thickness of the wood. We've already cut this bevel so that we know that when we put it in there, that's going to be a tight joint between here and here. Great. We're going to cut down here into this piece here to remove this wood. And we're going to use a back saw to do that. Okay, so it's going to be a nice straight line across the bottom instead of this uh, yes. kind of beveled thing. That's going and the on. way we're going to ensure that it's straight is we're going to use that square again, but instead of here where we brought the line across, mm -hmm. now we're going to come up here. And don't worry about the pencil line on the piece of furniture, it will erase with the eraser. And we just draw a line here. Okay. Now we know that's the end where we're going to, we're not going to cut any further than that. Okay. And then we're going to take the piece of wood that we cut and we know we're going to replace this with and we're just going to hold it onto there and we're going to do a little mark right there. And you see there's the line. We have a line this way and a line that way. Yep. So the first thing we want to do is we want to cut this end piece and we're going to use our little gentleman's back saw for that, which is a dovetail saw. And I don't know if we ever got a really good close-up of it, but you can see how fine yeah. these teeth are. This is called a cross-cut saw, and it's meant exclusively to go across the wood. Okay, and so, the finer and it, the teeth, the finer the cut. Yes, and the thinner the blade, also the thinner the kerf. You see how fine that is? Yeah. What we're going to do is we're only going to cut from this point to this point where this bottom line is. We're not going to go into this, otherwise we'll scar something that you'll see. I'm going to eye that line along my saw, and I'm keeping my saw on your side of that black line. Okay. So if I have any mistakes, I can come longer if I need to. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaving myself room for error. 
And I always like to creep up on any length that I, I'm trying to fit nice and tight. Exactly. Uh, rather than overdoing it, it's better to underdo. Yes. And what I'm doing also here is the same thing, a similar thing. I'm pulling the saw. Now, this saw cuts on the push. Japanese saws cut on the pull. Okay. So, with this saw, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to give myself enough of a groove to start my saw cut in. And you see how it's making that fine little? Yeah, it's really tiny. Yeah. So now that I've got that, I'm going to start going forward. But I'm going to keep my eye up here. Down here doesn't matter as much, but I'm going to keep my eye and keep blowing that out because I don't want to go past this mark right here. Now, chisels are funny because chisels have a bevel on one side and they're flat on the back. So if I were to take this chisel in here and push in, it would create a flat line here on the bottom and it would wedge this stuff up. Okay. So whenever you want it to be flat, you use the flat side towards that. Okay. But what we want to do is we want to come in here and take out this wood and you'll see I'm going to tap it with the mallet back here. Now, because there's a bevel back there, as I tap it, it's going to go forward. See? How it travels? Yes. And the bevel is giving you the flat backing. If I were to turn it this way, now the bevel's outside, right? Mm-hmm. What's the chisel doing? <laughs> it's just digging, digging straight in. in. Yeah. So it's not giving me the travel that I want. So what I'm doing is using this piece of wood down here so I don't go any further south than I need to and taking this off. And at the same time, I'm coming in this way and I'm cleaning this up and running it down my saw cut is my stop and what I'm doing is working this surface down and this surface in at the same time. So now we need to continue the bottom line all the way across so we can continue taking out the other half of the wood. The only problem is that we have this piece of the original um, arm that's still glued there solid and we don't want to lose that. And then I took the gouge and I cut this little part out with the chisel yeah. which left this semicircle. Really easy, fast. <clears throat> Took me two seconds. Now that'll span that and I can put, I can clamp here and there and that'll give me the line all the way across. Great. Look at that. Comes right out. See how easy that is? Easy. But now I don't want to come in here like this. I always want to stay flat because I want to carry that line in because now I'm cutting. On the end I'm not. Right. So this is going to give us that nice straight line. So now you're using a number 60 and a half plane to get the end grain off of that piece of wood. We're trying to fit it a little at a time and that tool takes wood off a little at a time. Looks good. And now we have to transcribe this over to that. So, okay, so do a little mark. I could fill it all in. Fill it all in black and that way we'll get rid of all of that. Okay. Both sides. Okay. And I'll do the back here and okay. make it easy on you. And that's it. Now we're going to take it over to the vise. I'm just going to plane off this corner a little bit. What plane are you using? This is a number two Stanley, but you can also use this little block plane that we talked about. And it'll do the same job. 